Hi there, my name is Sean McBeth and I work on virtual reality projects in my spare time. So I have something new now. This just came to me yesterday. It was a Kickstarter project that I helped fund and uh, they delivered, I think they delivered a month late, which if you know Kickstarter projects is like six months early. Um, and I have it right here. This is the Wearality Sky. Um, and so, you know, I, I've opened it up, but I put it all back together again so that I could do an unboxing for you here. So to start, you know, the box is pretty big. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a really nice quality box. I kind of wonder why they went with such a high quality box. Boxes like this are extremely expensive to make, anywhere from 5 to $10 uh, a pop, whereas uh, uh, just a regular brown cardboard box would be at most a dollar. Um, so they're spending a lot of money. On, on the box here, um, that's okay. You know, as we open it up, we see uh, we see the device right there, right in front of us. I'm gonna pop this out and I'm gonna put it aside for a minute as we go through the rest of the box. So they have a little bit of a, an insert here, and it's uh, yeah, it just goes a little bit about thank you for helping and. Who are we? What is our mission? You know, go download some apps. Please don't stare at the sun. Then there's an end user license agreement. Um, this is interesting. Usually, you only see these with uh, with heart with software, and the wear reality does not come with software. Not not out of the box, at least. You have to go and download it. It's, it's really just a, a plastic device that you clip onto your phone. So I don't really understand what sort of license agreement you can really agree to. Uh, you know, it's not like I can send this back. It's not like I can check, no, I don't agree to this. I, so I'm kind of a little, I'm a kind of a little um, peeved at the idea that I've just been entered into an agreement without really any sort of warning that I was going to be entering an agreement. Well, we're going to move on. Uh, an extra pet set of clips. That's interesting. I was not expecting an extra set of clips. There's not an extra set of lenses, so I don't know what this is going to do. Perhaps they expect the clips to break. That's surprising. And then a couple of cards here. Warning! Don't stare into the sun! Who are these people who are staring into the sun with their with their headsets with their lenses? I don't know. Why why does this sound like a, a good idea? We've got their logo on the back and then um, QR code and a link to go download some apps. Cool. All right, and some swag. So there, you know, a T-shirt with the Wearality logo. Cool. Feels very nice, nice quality fabric. We've got a badge. Save the world from 2D. Well, I saved the world from 2D. And then a bag to put the wearality in. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice bag, you know, probably polyester of some kind, but it's uh, it's got a good weight to it. Um, it definitely seems like. This is much more portable than the Google Cardboard. I was at an event a couple of days ago and I had my Google Cardboard with me and I ended up just sort of standing around not knowing what to do with it. At, you know, after, after I demonstrated everything and we were talking, you know, it, was, it was a little cumbersome to hold on to. But with this bag and, and the display being so thin once it's folded up, I could see this fitting into my back pocket while I'm standing around and talking. Uh, which which would be really cool. And then finally, there's a hat in here. So the hat, uh, you know, it's got, of course, their logo. So, uh, so the phone uh, slots in here pretty easily. Um, you basically just put this in here, and, uh, and then over on the other side, you pull it out, and then it slots in. Very, very simple setup. And then uh, with the hat, uh, the hat slots on easily as well. You just put it right there and it clips right in. And then when you wear the hat, you know, when you wear the hat, it'll 
dangle in front of your eyes. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, it's pretty pretty simple setup. Um, I had tried this with my baseball cap, and my baseball cap rim is is broken in, you know, as as you generally should do with a cap, and uh, it uh, it was you you don't you don't want to do that do this with a broken in cap. You see here this uh, this there's a little bit of a gap here with the cap with my baseball cap. It was it was a little bowed here, so that this gap was much larger, and um, that kind of ruins the light tightness of the whole system. Um, the the lenses inside of this are very susceptible to glare, to lens flare. Uh, let me just take it apart here again. Uh, we have what we have here are called Fresnel lenses. Um, Fresnel lenses are used in um, in lighthouses and in traffic lights and you can see here that they are ridged there's a little bit of ridging on them and actually there are two lenses per eye there's there's one here and there's one here and so this this frame uh, holds the lenses together at the right distance so the lenses are very susceptible to lens flare from any side light coming into the device you want to make sure that you you block out the light very well. Um, don't have any bright lights on near you while you're using it. Um, it can very drastically affect the image quality. Uh, I might actually eventually um, slap this into a Google Cardboard type setup just to block out the rest of the light, um, which I know kind of defeats the purpose of the of the folding design. But uh, it, it'll depend on how I end up using this the most. Um, image quality is actually very good. Um, one of the things with the Fresnel lenses that happens is that it actually blurs the image just a little bit, uh, which at first you're going to say, that doesn't sound good, but it actually turns out to be slightly better. Uh, you know, I, I've noticed that uh, text is easier to read with the, with the Fresnel lenses than with spherical lenses. Um, also, these Fresnel lenses do not suffer from any sort of spherical aberration. So uh, if you're running a program, you can turn off any spherical aberration correction, which gives you a small, ever so slight performance boost. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I did not, this is definitely a much higher field of view than Google Cardboard. Google Cardboard, you get probably 50 degrees field of view. They advertise 150 degrees field of view with this. I'm not sure it's quite that. I don't know. I don't have a system to measure it right now. Um, when I had my phone inside of it, my phone is a it's a five inch display. I'm gonna show you right here. Five inches. Um, this particular setup I I have here says it's good for five to six inch displays. When I use my five inch display with it. Uh, I can see the edges of the display on, on the very edges. So I'm not getting the full range of the lens right now. Um, so that's a little, that's a, you know, that's a little interesting. So that's about it. And that's the Wearality Sky. Uh, it's, it's definitely a good device. I, I like it overall. Um, you know, there's still trade-offs between this or that, you know, one thing or the other. Uh, I think at this time, if you are a virtual reality developer, you kind of owe it to yourself to own one of all three systems. You know, the the cardboard, the the traditional cardboard, the Wear Reality Sky, the DK2. Right now, uh, when the HTC Vive comes out, I'll probably get that too. Um, you know, because there's just so many people out there that are going to have completely different setups. That I think. Having those devices together will, will give you the chance to test things out and be able to figure out what you need to do to make your demos work correctly. Um, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, I'm Sean Macbeth, and uh, this was the Wearality Sky.